Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the third video on income flows versus cash flows. And in this video, we will discuss the relation between a statement of cash flows, income statement, and balance sheet. Please like, subscribe, and share my channel to search for accounting lessons and hit the notification bell button to alert you for the latest video. For all of your questions, comments and suggestions, please put them in the comment section below. And for webinar and guest speaker invites, please send me a message at accountingamir at gmail.com. A special word of thanks to Mr. Ziad, a final year student of Management Science Department Yambu Industrial College, who assisted me in compiling tables for this video. We hope that this video helps students in their academic development and teachers in enhancing their lesson plans and teaching methodologies. Net income based on accrual accounting may differ from actual cash flows due to timing differences in revenue recognition and expense matching. Regulations like USGAAP and IFRS aim to prevent manipulation of earnings under accrual accounting, enhancing transparency and reliability. Cash flow statements, while crucial for tracking short-term liquidity, can be more susceptible to management influence compared to earning reports. Accrual accounting provides a comprehensive view by recording economic events as they happen, influencing both balance sheets and income statements. Balance sheets and income statements derived from accrual accounting offer insights into a company's assets, liabilities, and overall financial performance. Understanding these financial relationships is essential for informed decision-making and strategic financial analysis. So let us now discuss the operating section of the statement of cash flows, highlighting the types of adjustments necessary to reconcile net income to cash flows from operations. Operating section reveals cash inflows and outflows from a company's main business operations. It links cash flows to reported profitability, helping to detect potential earning manipulation. Both USGAAP and IFRS offer two formats to present the operating section and both reconcile net income to cash flows from operations. It adds back non-cash expenses like depreciation and subtracts gains and adds losses from non-operational activities and adjusts for changes in working capital items like accounts receivable and accounts payable. It provides critical insight into the company's core activities and clarifies how reported profits translate into actual cash movements, supporting effective financial analysis and decision making. The cash flow statement under USGAAP and IFRS offers two methods to prevent such cash flows to present rather such cash flows from operations the direct method and the indirect method. Direct method directly lists cash receipts and payments categorized by sources like cash from customers, cash paid to suppliers. The advantage is that it provides a clear intuitive view of actual cash flows related to operating activities. However, this requires a separate reconciliation schedule to convert from net income to cash flows, which adds complexity. 
indirect method starts with net income and adjust for non cash items to derive cash flows from operations the advantage is that it aligns directly with the income statement making it easier to interpret for some users however it re requires reconciling adjustments like changes in account receivable and is less straightforward and may require interpretation despite the standard setters preferring the direct method for its clarity the indirect method is overwhelmingly used by companies due to practical reasons as most firms find the indirect method simpler to implement because it doesn't require a separate reconciliation schedule let us look into the statement of cash flows under the direct and indirect method <clears throat> The operating cash flows for the year 2015 is 8412 as shown in the two financial statements of cash flows indirect method and direct method Under the direct method it includes cash inflows and outflows that includes uh, receipt from customers uh, amount paid for inventory and prescription uh, amount dispersed to suppliers and employees uh, so you can see that and when you look into the indirect method obviously we are going to adjust uh, two things adjust the uh, the in the in the uh, on all those expenses that because of which there is no cash outflow and we are going to make adjustment in the working capital as well so but you can see that regardless of the presentation method whether it is direct or indirect the net operating cash flow it remains consistent on both the methods so let us talk more about the operating section adjustments for the indirect method so under the indirect method of presentation cash flows from operations uh, and adjustments to net income involve uh, two main types adjustments to work or we can say working capital adjustments and non cash income adjustments Coming to working capital adjustments, these adjustments account for changes in operating working capital accounts like accounts receivable, inventories, uh, accounts payable over the period. It reflects the timing difference between when income is recognized and when cash associated with that income is received or paid. Non-cash adjustments include items such as depreciation amortization deferred taxes uh, gains or losses on asset disposal so these items impact net income but do not affect cash flows in the current period therefore they are adjusted out of net income to calculate cash flows from operations these adjustments ensure that the cash flow statement accurately reflects the cash generated or used by a company's core operating activities. By reconciling net income to cash flows from operations, the statement clarifies how reported profits translate into actual cash movements, aiding in financial analysis and decision making. So let us first talk about the adjustments for non-cash components in the operating section of the cash flow statement. And the first one is depreciation and amortization. So depreciation and amortization expense is added back to net income because it reduces assets and net income 
but doesn't involve cash outflows. Similarly, bad debt expense is added back if significant as it reduces accounts receivables and net income without affecting cash flows. Coming to deferred tax expense. Now deferred tax expense is added back to adjust for differences between income tax expense and taxes paid reflecting timing variations. As can be shown, an add back of, of deferred income of 21 million in the year 2015. Then stock based compensation. Now stock based compensation is added back because it is an expense recorded in net income but doesn't require cash flow. Then we have um, gains and losses. Now gains and losses are adjusted to avoid double counting with cash proceeds from asset sales reported in the investing section. So these adjustments ensure the cash flow statements accurately shows cash flows from operating activities. Then equity method income. Now when a firm holds say between 20 to 50 percent of another company's common shares it uses the equity method. This means the investor recognizes its shares of the investee's earnings in its own income. Dividend received are deducted from the investment account. For example, you can see that in the operating section, uh, the Starbucks have added um, 148.2 million in distribution received from equity method investees, which represents dividends received from its many investments in various entities. Coming to non-controlling interest, now when a parent company owns more than 50% but not 100% of another company, it consolidates 100% of the subsidiary's financials but subtracts the portion attributable to minority shareholders from net income. And I would like to show you more about it. Now, if you look into the net earnings for the, for the year uh, 2015, it is 2,759, uh, sorry, 2,759 million including non-controlling interest. After deducting 1.9 attributable to a Starbucks amount to 2,757. So to adjust for non-cash deductions, Starbucks begins its statement of cash flows with 2,759 million, uh, including the non-controlling interest, which helps to reconcile these adjustments for accurate cash flow reporting. Um, then we have other comprehensive income. So this includes non-cash adjustments like financial security changes and foreign currency gains, which are reported in comprehensive income, but not in the in net income. Now, since the firms include these amounts in comprehensive um, income rather than net income, they do not require adjustments to net income uh, in the statement of cash flows. Next, we have employee related costs such as pensions. Now, pensions are of two types. 
defined contributions and defined benefits now in case of defined contribution plans contributions are equal to pension expenses so no adjustments are made but in the case of defined benefits plans pension expenses may differ from the cash contributions due to future benefit estimates adjustments are made to reconcile net income and cash flows and you can see and the, in, in the in the operating cash flow for general motors over here um, regarding excess tax benefits from share based compensation now you can see that general motors they adjust its operating cash flows by adding back the non cash expense um, of 321 million um related to pension and other post retirement benefits opeb they have but at the same time they have also subtracted uh, opeb uh, by a significant amount of 1600 now this adjustment reflects the cash outflows for pensions and opeb payments and remove the non cash pension expense included in the net income then excess tax benefits from share based compensation so companies estimate the fair value of stock options granted to employees over time this expense lowers taxable income resulting in lower tax expense when employees exercise stock options they owe taxes on the difference between the stock price at excess at exercise and the strike price the company receives a tax deduction equal to the amount the employee realizes as taxable income which can be more than cumulative expense recognized this excess tax benefit reduces tax paid but is not recognized as reducing tax expense on the income statement instead the excess tax benefit is credited directly to paid in capital in the statement of shareholders equity starbucks for example they have deducted 132 uh, million uh, where we have the operating activities they have added back the excess amount excess tax benefits of 132 and they have subtracted the same amount from the operating activities you can see this then uh, we come to impairment and restructuring related charges so impairment charges are the write offs or write downs of assets that reduce net income but do not involve actual cash transaction therefore impairment charges are added back to net income you can see impairment and restructuring charges are added back to net income when computing operating cash flows now these are estimated cost associated with uh, coming to restructuring cost and uh, these are the costs that are associated with restructuring activities with actual cash payments typically occurring later so restructuring charges are added back to net income and the cash payments for restructuring are subtracted from the net income in the operating section of the statement of cash flows for example if you look into this pepsi company um, they have reported uh, a cash back of 230 million 
uh, uh, for actual cash in, uh, as an add back um, for restructuring and impairment charges and at the same time they have actually deducted 208 million for actual cash payments related to restructuring so this results in a net positive adjustment of 22 million to net income now the second type of adjustments convert net income to cash flow from uh, operations are the changes in the working capital um, and uh, accounts like uh, maybe current assets current liabilities and inventories so let us talk a bit about them regarding accounts receivable and deferred revenues they represent um, uh, now rep they represent revenue recognized for which cash has not been collected that is for accounts receivables so an increase in accounts receivable indicates revenue recognized but cash not received leading to a negative adjustment on the cash flow statement a decrease indicates more cash collected than revenue recognized in case of deferred revenues they represent cash received in advance for providing goods or services so this adjustment reflects timing differences between cash receipts and revenue recognition so positive adjustments indicate growing deferred revenue while negative adjustments indicate revenue recognition reducing deferred revenue for things that you can see here for the Starbucks, they report adjustments for stored value card liability that is deferred revenue showing positive adjustments each year as customers increasingly prepay for the coffee coming to inventories Cash flow decreases because more cash is tied up in inventory that hasn't been sold yet. So this increase also reduces net income since it is not yet included in cost of goods sold. Now decrease in inventories uh, will uh, increase cash flows because a decrease is expensed as cost of goods sold. Although some of this cost may have been paid in the previous period coming to uh, prepaid expenses so cash flow decreases because cash was paid upfront but the expense has not yet been recognized <clears throat> so this increases um, as, um, this increase will subtract be subtracted from the net income and a decrease in cash flow expenses will increase uh, cash flows because expenses were recognized without a simultaneous cash outflow. So this decrease is going to be added to the net income. Then we have accounts payable and accrued expense. So cash flow increases. Um, because expenses were recognized but payment has not yet been made hence no cash outflow is there so this increase adds back to the net income then we have a decrease in accounts payable um, so cash flow uh, is going to decrease because payments exceed expenses that increase these liabilities implying a net cash outflow so this decrease is, is subtracted from the net income then comes the income tax payable so taxes paid may not correspond to the taxes recognized in net income due to timing differences adjustments are made to convert income tax expense to actual cash payments next let us see why do adjustments rarely equal the changes in assets and liabilities on the balance sheet
The adjustments on the statement of cash flows rarely match changes in corresponding balance sheet items due to several reasons. Now, when a company acquire another firm, it often includes the acquired firm's assets and liabilities on its balance sheet. The cash used for such acquisitions is reflected in the investment section of the cash flow statement and not in the operating activities. Including these changes in operating cash flows would double count the cash flow impact. Now, non-cash transactions affect assets, liabilities or equity without involving cash such as issuing stock for acquisition or settling liabilities with equity. So these changes don't affect cash flow directly but need adjustments on the cash flow statement to accurately reflect changes in the operating cash flow. Uh, then coming to the assets like accounts receivable may have contra accounts like bad debt allowance. So changes in these contra account affect the net balance sheet amount differently from the cash flow adjustments as they represent adjustments to the non-cash portion of the asset. These factors mean that while balance sheet changes show the financial position, the cash flow statement adjusts these changes to show actual cash movements. During the reporting period, ensuring accurately portrayal of cash flows from operating, investing and financing activities. Coming to foreign currency translation impact. So foreign currency translation converts local currency balances to the parent companies reporting currency during financial consolidation. So non-cash adjustments like, like foreign currency gains or losses resulting from transaction are excluded from operating cash flow calculations to accuracy. Then changes in working capital on the cash flow statement may differ from those on the balance sheet due to non-cash adjustments like acquisitions then companies often explain discrepancies to provide a clearer understanding of operational cash flows. Uh, changes in items like property, plant, equipment, or debt on the balance sheet are affected by non-cash factors such as foreign currency translation, leading to differences in the cash flow statement operating section adjustments. Finally, let us uh, discuss the relation between net income and cash flows from operations. Now, the relationship between net income and cash flow from operation can vary for several reasons. Like, there is a general relation like cash flows from operations often exceed net income because non-cash items like depreciation, deferred taxes, and share-based compensation are added back to the net income. Then growth and working capital like growing companies may experience changes in accounts receivable, inventory and payables. Higher sales can increase receivables and inventory cash outflows while payables may not increase as much resulting in a subtraction from net income when calculating cash flows from operations. Then industries with longer operation cycles such as construction or manufacturing have delays between cash outflows for production and inflows from customers. This delay can widen the gap between net income and cash flows from operations. Business with long-term operating cycles like wineries require significant cash investments long before they receive sales revenue. In contrast, business with shorter cycles such as restaurants collect cash soon after providing services, minimizing the impact of working capital changes. So in summary, while net income measure profitability 
cash flows from operation shows how much cash a business generates from its core activities the differences between net income and cash flows from operations depends on growth rates industry characteristics and how cash flows align with operational activities over time let us look into the starbuck financial performance uh, for the period 2011 to 2015 and we are going to highlight the key trends between the net income and the cash flows so we can see that starbuck consistently generated positive cash flows from operations each year you can see over here however um so obviously this reflects that it is a mature and a uh, and a profitable company however cash flows from investing activities and financing activities are negative annually which is typical for established firms throughout most years cash flows from operations exceed the net income uh and the primary uh, primary reason for this is uh, is a substantial positive adjustments for non cash components of income along with generally positive but smaller adjustments related to working capital there is an exception for the year 2014 in the year 2014 there is an anomaly where net income was higher than the cash flow from operations and this may be mainly due to starbucks settling a significant deterioration in the year 2013 we can see here they have settled a litigation of 2784 million and uh, which may have lowered the net income in that year So overall analysts use such summaries to track financial patterns and identify anomalies that warrant further investigation into detailed financial statements and accompanying notes. So uh, this completes the third video on income flows versus cash flows understanding the statement of cash flows. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation and if you have found value in this video then please like subscribe and share my channel and hit the notification bell button to alert you for the latest video for webinar and guest speaker invites please send me a message at accountingamir@gmail.com remember effective questioning brings insight which fuels curiosity which cultivates wisdom if you have any question or any suggestion regarding this session then please put them in the comment box below or by email and inshallah i will reply you back thank you so much and happy learning